Another isekai this season, and it starts strikingly similar to the last one. We very briefly see a high school class because it's obliterated in some explosion that kills all of them before our main girl is shown to wake up as a spider. What a creative and original concept! There's no other popular series about someone being isekai to the low level mob in a magic RPG world. Wherever did they come up with that one? Well, at least in this show she looked kind of like a Digimon. In all fairness, I like this one better than the pedophile reincarnates as a magic baby. Our protagonist this time also was kind of a loser, but she just seemed kind of like a shy girl being bullied in class rather than a literal adult that refuses to go outside. The show spends the majority of its time in these early episodes showing our disappointed spider wife who adjusts to her new life significantly lower on the food chain. She sees spiders eating one another, larger animals trying to eat her, people trying to kill her with fire. It's a tough life being a spider. Honestly, when it's not dragging on for too long with the self-talk about boring shit, the sequences can be kind of entertaining. We watch her fight a snake, and it's like this big epic battle, but in reality this would be a generic squabble between two wild animals, and I think that's kind of what I enjoy most about this one. It's silly but kind of intuitive to watch the spider girl overcome obstacles. She adjusts surprisingly well given her circumstances, probably a little too well, but it's kind of funny how they work with the remnants of her old life, like when she builds a house with a web shaped like a TV and a luxury bed. She's still totally aware of her previous life, but this time I'm fine with that because she's basically transformed into a spider in an RPG world instead of confusingly being two people at once. It does take place in like an actual RPG because some god voice assigns her skills and experience the more she does stuff, and as far as I've seen it just assumes you know what's going on. I think it's like actively assuming you've watched other isekai where this happens, but it's kinda lazy not to give some reason in your own show. Maybe it will later, I don't know. Her other classmates also turn out to be isekai into the same world, but most of them are people in some prestigious place who haven't run into their missing spider classmate yet. This seems like it could go in an interesting direction if they all get together more and are in the isekai world as a unit. It might even give us a reason to give a shit that they're all in a new place rather than just being isekai where they totally give up on their old lives. There's also some demon lord out there that I'm assuming we will see spiders save the day against and that might be kinda cool. I may keep watching this, but there isn't a lot going on in a single episode and I think the show would really benefit from picking up the pace to avoid deliberately wasting my time with minutia about every skill point or inner thought of the protagonist to keep shit running. It makes me feel like there's something here, but not enough to justify a full 22 minute episode. You may get something out of it. Also, I love the ending sequence. The theme is like idle spider Dempa rave and it's my favorite part of the show. Come on.